Hi, uh, I'm Dr. Steve Rubenstein, and today we're going to talk about dust mites. Uh, the number one thing in the world for people to be allergic to are these lovely creatures called dust mites. Uh, and 75% of people who are allergic are allergic to these little creatures uh, that are the main component of dust. Uh, the dust mites live on shed human skin. So everybody makes new skin and sheds old skin. And where the dust mites live is not on you, but wherever you shed your skin. And where you shed your skin the most is in bed. So there's a lot of good studies out there to show that uh, a number of environmental measures that can be taken to minimize the impact of dust mites on people's noses, asthma, and other allergies. The dust mites are small enough that they get through the normal stitching in pillowcases, mattress covers, and so forth. And where they really accumulate is in the pillow, in the mattress, and in the comforter. Therefore, uh, getting new bedding frequently theoretically can make a difference, but obviously it's impractical to get a new mattress or a new comforter every month. So the state of the art right now is to get these allergy covers that have a stitching that's small enough that the dust mites cannot get through. Many of these covers um, are available at places like Target's or Macy's, but we do have uh, catalogs in which you can buy some of these uh, products. The one I definitely recommend most is um, for the pillows. The pillow covers that you can buy at commercial outlets usually are uh, noisy and crinkly, whereas the ones made by these uh, allergy supply houses are nice and thin and they don't make very much noise. They cost a couple dollars more, but it's definitely worth the money to get those. Remember, new pillows are old in a month or two, so to get new pillows every month doesn't make any sense. And to get these allergy covers uh, is a very cost-effective way to try and minimize your allergies. When you put these covers on the pillow or on the mattress, you also want to put the regular pillow cover or the regular mattress cover on top of them. When those are washed, then it's important that you still take a damp washcloth and go over the top of the allergy cover to wash away the dust mites that are accumulate on top of that cover. Uh, it's also important that once you use a damp cloth to wash those off, that you dry that area off. Now, what I do recommend for people is the more expensive uh, pillow covers, but for the mattress, you can buy less expensive ones, either from the allergy supply houses or by retail uh, outlets locally. That takes care of the bed and the pillow itself. Next are comforters. Comforters are bad. We hear a lot of bad things about down comforters, but down really is no worse than polyfill. It's unwashed bedding that becomes a problem. So whatever's on the bed that you sleep with should optimally be washed every month. Sometimes with comforters, every two to three months is sufficient. But washing the comforter cover itself is not good enough. It's inside the comforter where the dust mites accumulate. So optimally, people will have plain blankets that can be washed more easily every month. But even if you have a comforter, you really want to try and wash it every month or two. Um, it, there are some old wives' tales that say that if you put tennis shoes or tennis balls in the washer or dryer with the comforter, it potentially can make that comforter less lumpy and bumpy uh, once it's been washed. The um, one intervention I'll recommend sometimes is in the warmer months to get plain blankets and see how you do, and then when the fall comes around, put the comfort around and see if you get worse. And obviously, if you get worse, then you know that you really have to be more aggressive with your bedding. Other interventions in the bedroom can include making sure the bedroom is calm at bedtime, that there's no cleaning, straightening, closing curtains, wrestling with children, uh, jumping on the bed for one hour before you go to sleep. Uh, similarly, uh, you should be out of a room for 45 minutes to an hour after it's been cleaned or vacuumed. Cleaning and vacuuming more often certainly can't hurt, but most studies have shown that doing it more often really does not help that much. Um, the other significant place for accumulation of dust mites is, are in couches. Uh, leather couches are better, but I certainly cannot tell people to go out and spend three to four thousand dollars for a couch or a leather couch um, because the yield of, of improvement is very low. It's important, however, that you don't lie down or nap on couches as much as possible. If you're going to lie down, it's not a bad idea to put a sheet down to cover uh, the couch. And what's most important is not to put the face into old couch pillows, whether that be on the couch or the floor or wherever. 
uh, a pillow from the bed that has an allergy cover on it or a leather pillow or a vinyl pillow is okay, but it's very important that uh, the head does not uh, go into um, old couch pillows or any of those square rectangular pillows that you can lie down on. Next topic is humidifiers and vaporizers are generally bad. Dust mites thrive above 50% humidity and it's important that humidifiers are not automatically used. Humidifiers and vaporizers will play a role in certain conditions called croup, but for general nasal secretions or cough, we generally don't recommend humidifiers or vaporizers for allergic people. Uh, if it's really dry when the heat's on, then nasal saline sprays that you can buy over the counter, such as ocean spray or air AYR spray, can be just as effective without creating a uh, dust mite or even moldy environment. Uh, other things that are preferable, if possible, is to wash bedding in hot water. It turns out it's not as essential to wash in hot water as we thought it used to be. Uh, it's more the frequency of washing bedding that's important. But if you can wash pillow covers and sheets and even um, blankets in hot water, that's probably preferable. The um, other interventions, which always um, are a source of controversy, are air filters. Good air filters are very expensive. No study has ever shown that air filters reduce symptoms, although they certainly can reduce the amount of dust in the air. Good air filters, such as HEPA filter, that's H-E-P-A, uh, cost three to four hundred dollars. And if uh, things aren't going well with the, your allergy care or the other, all the other interventions you've tried, it's certainly worth maybe trying an air filter for a month or two. But if there's no improvement, I frequently recommend, and don't tell this to anybody, um, taking the air filter back. You may have heard about something called an ionic breeze, which is a little bit more money uh, and is like a HEPA filter but doesn't make as much noise. Uh, it's uh, similar that if you want to try and spend the money for that, you may, but uh, usually these interventions are not worth the money. Air filters for the furnace are important to change once a year and maybe once during the winter months. But to buy fancy air filtration systems or to uh, clean out duct systems usually is not worth the money. The same can be said for carpets. 